Hello, and welcome to this class. This is an introductory course on Houdini, in which you will learn the basics of this powerful 3D software. We are a team of 3D artists and video makers who specialize in the subject of education. Our students can learn how to add visual effects to their videos, as well as the fundamentals of modeling and animation. Houdini is one of the most powerful software for creating visual effects. If you're interested in learning more about this issue, this class could be an excellent place to start. This class is for those who have no previous knowledge of Houdini. We'll begin with the fundamentals, such as viewport navigation, basic modeling, adding lights and materials, and finally, the rendering. These principles will allow you to take your first steps towards completing your first project in Houdini. And, as we'll see in later classes, we'll teach you the fundamentals of more complicated visual effects. We invite you to make a simple still life rendering as a class assignment. Importing a 3D model into Houdini, assigning materials and textures, creating lights and cameras, and finally rendering, are all part of this process. In the discussion part of this session, we also encourage you to share your work. We're pleased to provide you recommendations and suggestions on how to improve your renderings. So, let's get started. As a first step, you have to download the software. You can do that from the SideFX website. You can download the Houdini Apprentice version, which is completely free. Create an account and open the download section. The best way to install the software is with the launcher application. In this way, you can easily install the latest versions and manage your license. Okay, now you can run Houdini. The first question we have to answer is what makes Houdini a unique software in the modeling and simulation process? Well, the answer is that it's based on a procedural workflow. But what does this mean? Consider this simple example. Here we have a cube, and we want to modify its mesh. In a traditional modeling workflow, we physically modify the mesh, for example by moving this point. This is the same as if we would sculpt a piece of marble in the real life. After doing this, we can't go back, as we have physically modified the shape of the object. On the other hand, in Houdini, we add a so-called node, which, in short, is simply a piece of information or command to do something. In this case, an edit node, which tells Houdini how to move the point. We are not modifying the original mesh. I can go back to the original box, or I can change the parameters that define how to move the point. Consider this additional example. I want to change the size and rotation of this box. So, first of all, delete the edit node. Then, add a transform one. In order to work, a node has to be connected to the object it has to work on. Now, scale and rotate the object. Again, we are not modifying the original mesh. Now, suppose we don't want the cube, but, for example, a tube but we want the tube to have the same scale and rotation of the box. In a traditional workflow, we should manually scale and rotate the tube or, even better, copy the related transformation from the original object to the new one. In Houdini, it's easy as connecting the transform node to the new object. And now, the tube has the same transformations as the original box. These, of course, are extremely basic examples, but I hope they can give you an idea of what a procedural workflow means. To be honest, many of the 3D software already have, or are implementing something like this. For example, in the way they can modify objects, or in the materials manipulation. But the procedural workflow in Houdini is the most complete and efficient we can have, especially in relation to the simulations, as we'll see in the next classes. Now, let's start with the basics of Houdini. On the left side, we have the viewport, where we can see the models and the simulations. We can add an object by simply clicking on the related button in the top bar. 
For example, let's add a sphere. You have to click where you want to place it. As soon as we add it, Houdini automatically creates the related node on the right, in the node editor. This means that every object is represented by a node. Now, we have two ways to modify the object. We can do that in the viewport, by selecting the related command, for example the move, rotate, or scale tool. But we can also do that in the property panel, in the top right of the screen. Here you can manually enter the numbers for each transformation you want. Or, if you click with the middle mouse in each of these fields, you can select the transformation units, and then move the mouse to the left or to the right. You can reset the default values by right-clicking on the related property and choosing Revert to Defaults. As told before, we have a node that represents the sphere. And this is placed in the so-called object context. This is where all the objects are created. For example, if you click on the Taurus button, the related node is created in the same context. If you want to navigate in the viewport, you can simply press the spacebar and then click the left, middle or right mouse button to move the point of view. You can also select the view button in the left panel and do the same as before. Let's go back to our nodes. We can also go inside each node. Double click on the Taurus object. You have another node that seems to be the same as before. But now we are in another context, the geometry one as you can see in the top right of the panel. Basically, here is where we can start adding other nodes in order to modify the initial object or to add other properties. For example, we already saw how to add a transform node. And we can only do that in the geometry context. If we go back to the object level, we have no more way to add a transform node. So, consider the node in the object level as a main container. In each container, we can add all the stuff we want. You can also think of these as folders of your PC. And indeed, you navigate them as folders. If you double-click the node, you go inside it, and at the top of the node panel, you have the same path as in the file explorer. But we can add other objects inside the sphere or torus node, and this can be a bit confusing at the beginning. For example, go inside the Sphere node. In order to add a new node, you simply have to press the Tab key with the mouse over the node panel. Here you have the list of all the nodes you can use. And they are really a lot. Now, select the Create group of nodes and click on the box. This adds a box node inside the original sphere node. You can see the related geometry by clicking on the last flag on the right of each node. This basically sets this node as visible in the viewport. So, we have a sphere and a box object inside the same original node. This becomes clear if we consider that when we originally added the sphere or the torus, Houdini simply created a container node, which in this particular case was a sphere or a torus but the geometry inside these nodes can be anything. They are, as already said, a simple container or folder. So, let's rename the original sphere node as our first container. But what can we do to see both the geometries? Well, we have to add a merge node. Again, press the tab key and try to find this node. This can be difficult, as you may not know the category it belongs to. So, simply start typing the first letter of the node, in this case, merge. Obviously, you have to know the name of the node, but most of them will become familiar as soon as you start practicing with Houdini. Now, connect the two objects to the merge node. You simply have to click on the output of each node, and drag the line to the input of the merge node. But nothing seems to happen. And this because, as we saw before, we have to set the visibility flag in the merge node. 
You can't yet see the sphere because the two objects overlap, and the scene begins to be a bit confusing. The first thing we can do is to hide the objects outside the actual node, in this case the torus 1. You can do that by clicking on this button and choosing the Hide Other Objects option. In this way, you see only the geometry inside this particular node. You can go back to the previous view by choosing the Show All or Ghost Other Objects. Now I'm going to move the sphere. Press the Tab key and type Transform. Well, we want this node to affect only the sphere object. So it has to be connected to it. The fastest way to do that is to click and move the node over the line that connects two nodes. When you release the mouse button, the node is automatically connected. Now, as told before, you can move the sphere by moving it in the viewport or in the property panel. Whatever method you choose, you have learned how to add, connect, and modify the nodes here inside Houdini.